All right, here we are at Trash Can Talk Podcast, bringing you a new episode with one of the most special people in my life. We, you've actually, we've talked about Cosmo a lot on the episodes, on Software and Underbelly, and now you'll finally get to meet Cosmo on my platform. We did all the pink lighting for you. I love it. Oh, my God. Oh, it's so beautiful. Right? So what have you been up to today? Well, first I want to say, hi, Brandon. I am really proud of you. I mean, I just walk in this establishment, and, like, you're staying sober, you know? And, like, you're kind of, like, working on this IOP, right? Yeah. And then I see that you have your own business, you know, silk screening business and doing all the things. And I just want to say that I could cry right now because I'm very proud of you. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, the thing, too, is, I mean, you are big in that even happening because when I got sober, nobody wanted to give me any sort of chance. You know what I mean? And it was like I walked in and you were just like, all right. But you remember, too, you're like, first you're going to clean up the cigarettes, you're going to do the bathroom, you're going to do... You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I made you work for it a little bit. Yeah. Like, really earned my spot back. But you know what? I didn't know the part when nobody wanted to give him a chance. If I would have known that part, I would have been like, hmm, let's see. But I remember when you came to me, you know what I mean? And you were like the cutest little thing, and you just right away got involved in the store, and you right away started selling. You right away just started selling. It's like right. in your blood. Like, I have it in my blood, you have it yeah. in your blood. And I remember just like all the girls, <laughs> they're just loving you. And I remember you coming like right away the first day to the counter with like a bunch of clothes, and you're like, she's gonna get all that. And I'm like, really? And like, she, yeah. And it was kind of like just sale after sale after sale. So you were phenomenal, right? you know? And I really didn't know your history that much. Well, you were there at the worst part. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> wait, I met you in a sober living day. Right, 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 right. Okay, wait a minute. Remember the bathroom? Let's back that right. thing up. Let's back that thing up. Right. I remember, yes. So we were in the Mariposa house together. Yes, that's how we met. Yeah. And I knew some of your history, but I didn't know how dark it was. Right. Right. Because in there we were like bright and shiny and we're just worrying about what outfit we're going to wear and how cute we were going to be. Right. right. Yeah. So, yeah, I remember. And I remember you stood sober. I remember you stood sober and your homeboy was Jay and we were like all roommates. Yeah. yeah. Remember? Yep. And then Jay kept on jacking off. Always. Which I love. It kept me in there. Yeah, no, right. yeah, not creepy, but I was, you did watch a little bit. You know, it kept me interested. Moy Black. <laughs> Who was that? The security guard? The big German tough security guard? I don't remember Oh, you, that. you know this guy. But I remember a friend of yours who was drop dead gorgeous. Right. Yes. Anyway, and he's in Palm Springs right now, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you always were with the in crowd and the cool kids and... Yeah, and I remember that, and we were in sober living together. That's how we met. Yes. Now, after that, you hired me. I'm gonna really throw you for a spin. You hired me, I was working at New York, New York, then I was working at New York Speed, right? Right. Messed up. You brought me back. I came to Ash and Flasher. Yes, yes, Now yes, I was yes. stuck in the bathroom. Do you remember that day? I do. I was stuck in the bathroom for like four hours in the middle of a sale. Yeah. And then you kicked the door open. Yeah. And it was just blood down my arms, down my neck. Yeah. Couldn't hit the vein. And in your groins. Yeah. I started shooting into my in your, groin. I remember blood coming down your it leg. It was everywhere. Yeah. It was everywhere. Yeah, that was a nightmare. So um, you came back, but you were not yourself. Right. You know what I mean? And it was kind of like a neon sign. And then all of a sudden, you were in the bathroom way too long. Yeah, you know? and then I just like said, Brandon, 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 yeah, I'll be right out, I'll be right out, and then I just fucking did a back kick and I right. kicked the door open, and there you were like bleeding to death. Yep. So I says, you know, get your shit and get it together and get the fuck out. Right. Yeah. And um, and you left. You left. You took your bags and left. And then I didn't see you for a long time. Right. 
And I did see you on North Hollywood one day. Yeah. You know how they see us? They get You get the spottings. Right. You know, and they, like Cosmo was spotted downtown by, by the trash can and the dumpster. Like, what is she doing down there, you know? Well, I saw you in North Hollywood, you know, and you weren't looking too great. And, um, you know, I didn't even, I wanted to pull over, and, right. you know, but I just knew that, like, you know, you were just doing your thing and there was probably nothing I could do about it at that time. So basically, I just, like, kind of let you go. And, uh, but it, like, broke my heart when I saw you on the street. Like, yeah. I broke my heart. Yeah, that was, I mean, it was, that was really hard because, uh, I mean, it's it's weird too. Cause how, I mean, how long were you out there for? Like, a few years? It was years? a minute, yeah. yeah. I think it was, like, around seven. That last wow, time. Wow, yeah. It was a really I, long time. Yeah. So at Cosmos, when I was working with Cosmos, even at, at Asher, Ash, we had Ash, Flasher, and Speed. Right. And me and you worked at Speed. We like, were at Speed, yeah. Every day. Yeah. Sometimes moving How around a little. How appropriate. Right. Speed. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, I was able to, that was the first time where I started the understanding sales. But at the time, you guys were so good at stocking that store. And you are so good at every piece you could grab was just, you know what I mean? And then at the time with the price points, and do you remember we had the Just Jean? Do you remember those jeans? Uh, the Just, just jeans. jeans, yes, Just right. Jeans, yeah. So you're like, every single thing, you grab the Just Jean, <laughs> and then we and you put it with everything, and then we had the Tutu and the Bustier, and right. everyone came for that combo. Right, So right. it's like, if you get, if, if someone will try it on, you probably had a six hundred dollar sale there. Yeah. Now in, with the just jeans and all the things we'd remember those rock and roll T-shirts the company just made them. They're distressed Mick Jagger face on them. I have, I have a picture with one of them. But yeah. Yeah. I forget what company made them, and it's like you threw everyone in that the just jeans. oh religion religion yeah yeah and we that had, company was so sick yeah right. they made the best fashions like they taught me a lot like they really did. Because those clothes, those clothes, yeah, and those, it was those certain combinations that right. we did, and it was like sale, sale, sale. So if it wasn't just a t shirt for $150, it would be like the whole outfit, right? And the rock star and, jeans were just taken off. Yeah. You were like the first person to have them. Yeah. And then what was that company? It's like Justin Timberlake or the wax denim ones? Oh, or? yeah. Um, uh, Rass. William Rass. So it was, oh yeah, William Rass. Yeah, William Rass. Was, so I mean, it was like. And then it was Will I Am. Will I Am. That's Remember? what it was. Will I Am. So Will I Am. Yeah, yeah. yeah he had he, those jeans, and it was just slam dunk. They were sick, and he was doing like leather jackets. Like all his things were so sick. So we had the storage, and we right, we yeah. had the combination. It was locked. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, locked. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like even I would go as far to say when it came to the bustier, the style of bustier tutu, you were that was yours. Well, we would make. That was your I combo. would make those. Right. Yeah, yeah. You made them. Right. So nobody on Melrose had two twos and right. BCAs, and everybody was looking at me like I'm crazy because I'm selling these two twos like we were giving them away. Right. But every girl had to have a bustier and a tutu. Right. And then cut to we did for Nicki Minaj. Right. What did she a, want? Yes. She the wanted cupcake one. Right. That cupcake look. When she was doing like the Barbie thing. Yeah. So her stylist was coming in. Right. What were they buying? Choo choos, bustiers, you right. know. And you had um, what was her name? Uh, Katy Perry. Katy Perry with the with the cupcake. We had all the stylists coming in. I can't even yeah. remember. I mean, Gwen's stylist still goes in there all the time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even the last time I was working there. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's like the majority of the innovative fashion of that time was coming out of the store, mm -hmm. and you made it. Right. It wasn't even like we went and got this fashion somewhere. The innovative fashion of the time was being made and coming out of the store. Yeah. So it was like, that was another thing. I remember, too, just for working with Cosmo, there used to be this, uh, when before they, they just switched over to blogs. So, like, uh, I mean, print magazine was completely going out the window. And the bloggers, before you saw online blogs, like the type blogs, and they had Viva Swag, which was like a, a, a featured stylist. It featured the, the stores Cosmo worked out on there, you know, big features. And I just was lucky enough to stand outside one day and they were doing like, you know, get, got a picture of me. They're like, this guy's a stylist from here. And, I, and then I really feel like I arrived. Well, you know yeah. what? 
you learned a lot, you know, oh, yeah. and like, you know, it's like I learned a lot too, right. you know, and then also I was creating, you know, stuff and like everybody down, everybody on Melrose was kind of had like the same stuff in their store. Right. But the difference between our store is that we actually made it. We had sewers. Right. Yeah. You know, and we found them in like quinceanera shops, you know what I mean? Yeah. And they were just the, the best sewers and they would just start making tutus and bustiers. Then I started making dresses and jumpsuits for like InSync and all for one and and then um what you call it uh uh, uh nikki six right and then remember uh the loonies right it was yuck mouth <laughs> and numbskull yeah you know they came to my house to they yeah. wanted me to do the album cover and it just blew up it was right. like this underground fashion world revealed right it blew up and i know you were taking notes because oh, i yeah. know you're a genius you know and i know it was going to be bigger than sales for you and then all of a sudden you started bringing shit in right you were bringing like these capes in yeah. and like you know you, you you like and you were um you did your own line yeah you know so then i started like selling your stuff right you know yeah so i was like you, you got the you took the memo yeah definitely i mean i like i said everyone everyone who's watched anything has heard me talk about cosmo household name at our house you know what i mean um there was like one pivotal moment that I, I really remember that just switched it up for me is one day you told me, you said, um, we're not, you're not selling anyone anything. You're dressing them back here. He's like, stop, stop selling people back here. This is, you told me this is where you have fun. And I was like, ah, but how is the sale, how is the sale not starting back here? You know what I mean? And I was so concentrated on the numbers and what I thought when, you know, you bring up the big pile, but one day you said, stop, go out. And you kicked me out the back. And then you took over on this one client, I can't remember who it was. You styled them and everything, and, and you're like, just watch. You kept coming back, and you're like, just watch. Kept coming back, just watch. Kept coming back. And then I'm like, what am I watching? And, then, and you're like, pretend that we're at your house and you're styling them out of your own closet. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. And boom, it clicked. Yeah. I was like, oh. Back here is not the sale. Yeah. Back here is the fun. This is the this is the show. This is the you know what I mean? We're not the, selling back here. The experience. It's the experience. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we get to the pile at the thing, right. Now we turn it on. Right. But right. if it's back there and you feel like we're just at home yeah. hanging out and you approach it the same way, right. There's very little sale involved in it at all. Yeah. Because people don't even realize you're selling them, right? Because you're not. Because I just, I still tell my people today, you know, that come in the store. Because right now it's hard to find. Like we're obsolete. Like right. there's no salespeople. They don't have any passion anymore. Like right. the kids today do not want to do it. Oh, I know. They don't have social skills. Like you could hire the hottest girl, and she's like, you could sell the Brooklyn Bridge girl. Right. And then when the customers come in, like they'll walk in the back on their phone. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah. nobody has like. The, so it was like that was the the last era of like salespeople on Melrose. You know. Right. So now it's really hard to find. So I gotta like really break my back trying to train these people, right. and I always tell them and you reminded me like it's like they're coming to your house like yeah. your girlfriend's coming to your house and you want to dress her better than you look yeah you want to focus all the energy on her you know yeah because like a lot of people are narcissists and they can't just bring themselves to give people all that energy but you really got to pour all that energy onto that person and make them feel like a million dollars right so when they leave not only are they going to look good and their friends are going to notice and their life's going to change and they're going to be more confident it's like a whole thing we just do this whole like exorcism right yeah you know but it all comes from you know just like uh, they're going to come back you know yeah, the experience and, yeah and from when i work with you like a lot of those people got married had children and now their children Shop. are coming back right and they're going to burning man and right. they're going so basically you know the tradition the tradition stood but um basically you know it got a little rough you know now we got um amazon and you yeah. got dolls kill and you got this and that you know but i still managed to keep those doors open right you know and then after, you know, uh, COVID, it was really bad. It got really bad, you know? And um, I came to see you and your girlfriend. Right. I got my hair done. And, you know, Brandon has a beautiful wife. And, 
you know, beautiful kids. And it's like, it's, it's a miracle. It's a miracle. And she's a hairdresser and she did my hair and she was amazing. She treated me like gold when I went there. But um, after COVID, um, things changed, you know? And Melrose, like, it really didn't come back back after the protest. Right. You know, you saw on the news when they were burning all the stores down. Yeah. You know, they didn't burn my stores down, thank God. But the, a lot of people lost their businesses because insurance wasn't covering. Right. Then they started, like, stabbing people. And, you know, and they started, like, you know, taking people's watches and, like, not only robbing them, but shooting them in the leg. Yeah. You know what I mean? On Melrose. I saw that across the street from Cool Kicks. It was just That's crazy. That's close to your store, too. Crazy. Yeah. And then I remember one day I go to work and I seen the, like, the like, Cosmo, there's two people dead on the corner. And I'm like, no, this, come on. And there were, there were two people dead on the corner. The cops weren't coming out at all. They were there for like two hours before a police car even showed up. Yeah. So that made all my customers with money and children, you know, afraid to come back to Melrose. Right. So I'm like, what do I, what do, I do now? Do I go back into hairdressing? Like, what do I do? No, I got to keep Melrose alive. You right. know? So believe me, the struggle is real. The yeah. struggle is real. And then there was no really Burning Man's, you know? Burning yep. Man's our busiest month. Burning Man didn't show up. And then it showed up a little bit. And then last year there was a storm and like all the money people didn't show up. And it was like really scary to keep those drawers open. Right. So, um, you know, I was like, okay, what do I do? You know? So anyway, and then I stopped wanting to be on camera. You know, because I, I remember, yeah, I gained some weight. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I all of a sudden got self conscious. You know what I mean? And then I said, you know what? Um, well, you started, you started me. You right. did again, because like I helped you before, and now you totally helped me out, Brandon. Like you really did. Like you really fucking did. You know? And um, I'm in the store, and I'm hearing. Soft white underbelly, soft white underbelly, soft white underbelly. I never heard of this in my life. Right. And they're like, Cosmo, Brandon's talking about you, how like you're his savior. He came to Melrose, like you helped him with his career and getting sober. And I'm like, what? Really? So everybody's telling me like all like my celebrity clients, they're like, you need to go on that show. You need to go on that show. Brandon's talking so highly of you. So I call Brandon and I was like, Brandon, like, oh my God, thank you. Like, you know, big shout out, like crazy. And I'm like, you think I could go on that show? And he goes, oh, let me make a phone call. You know, now we just make a phone call. And he made a phone call and he goes, you're on next week, right? So I go down there and I meet Mark, you know, and he's the producer of Soft White Underbelly, you know? And I just hit it off with him in the office, and we're talking about, like, I'm the queen of Melrose, and Brandon, and da 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 who I dress, who I undress. And, like, she, they're falling off the chairs. They're fucking hysterical laughing. And then before you know it, um, I booked a show. So I did the show with Mark. And then after that, you know, Mark was like, you know, I have a lot of people on my show. He goes, but you're a star. He goes, and I'm going to help you, you know, and your career. He goes, and I usually don't answer the phone for everybody. He goes, but I'm going to answer for you. So he goes, just, you know, I'll give you some suggestions. So basically, I'm just thinking I did an interview. You know, I told my story like I do in AA. You know, I just share, you know, what it was like then, what it's like now, you know. And um, it went crazy viral. It yeah. just went crazy viral. So what happened was, like, by you going on, do you know that we changed the, tra the trajectory? Because usually the people he interviews, it's always like doom and gloom, yeah, for doom sure, and definitely. gloom. But you know what? You brought the solution, and then I came, and then I brought the solution. Right. That you could be homeless, fucked up, a tranny, whatever, or fuck trannies, or whatever, you know? Yeah. And come back from that, you know? And be successful and get sober. Right. You know? So anyway, it was kind of like groundbreaking. It just happened overnight. Right. I, like, Brandon, I swear, like, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> I get real sensitive um, when I think about this, because it just happened like three weeks ago. Yeah. Literally three, three weeks, weeks yeah. ago. My life changed, you know? And I really owe it to you. You know, I really do. So not only did I help you, right. you helped me. Yeah. So anyway, from there, uh, 
he wanted to do another interview, and then he came in, and you know, you saw the interview with Rebecca, right? You know, so we try to get her sober, yeah. You know? And just like, so when he we, when Rebecca came in, you know, she, when I first met Rebecca, because everybody's like, she's out of her motherfucking mind, right, right, yeah. like this bitch is fucking crazy. But when she first came in, she was like going back to back with me with like, you know, the the one liners, you know, and I'm like, okay, she's really smart. And then she knew the designers like Christian Dior. She knew like more. And I'm like, I'm supposed to mentor you. I'm like, you're mentoring, you're mentoring me today, Rebecca, you know, but then after a while, I saw like the entitlement and the crazy, and that she's like, "I want this and I want that," and I just saw, I just saw that yes, she was a sick person, but I also saw she was very self centered and entitled, and basically, you know, I knew she was being like enabled, yeah. you know, because you know Mark bought her the outfits, right? And then a half hour later, I drive down Melrose and she's posing in front of. Uh, the stores and the outfits, yeah. you know what I mean? And I'm like, Rebecca, get in my car. You want to go to a meeting? She goes, fuck that. She goes, I'm going to the Abbey. Right. I'm going to get good drunk. So anyway, you know, she went to the Abbey. Right. And she got drunk because she bought everybody drinks because, you know, Mark gave her money and she looks fabulous in my outfits, you know. I remember she was wearing this see-through outfit, like kind of with like no underwear on, but that's another story, girl. But anyway... So that night she called Mark and she says, I want to go to rehab. So we did make a little breakthrough. Right. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I had my sponsor there. You saw the episode, yeah, I saw that right? Episode. So I had everybody, and I said, it takes an army, Rebecca. And I said, would you like to come, like work in a store like this and do fashion and maybe get sober? And I saw the click in her. And then I, I remember we hugged and I just felt like, we made a connection. Right. I made a connection. And then that night when I heard that she was went to rehab, I said, oh, my God, we made right. this connection, right? Cut to a few days later, I call Mark, and I'm like, how's she doing? And he said, like, it was just a mess. Like, she, yeah, let, she got thrown out of rehab. She sold all her beautiful clothes. She got in my store. And basically, you know the rest. Yeah. Right. So... Anyway, at least at least we connected a little. There was a little right. spark, you know. We planted a seed, Definitely. you know. So anyway, that episode went crazy viral. Yeah. So then that's, it's the episode that the fans wanted. Yeah, that was definitely the, just yeah. reading the comments. Yeah, there were, you kind of felt like wow, the fans who've been watching this forever got an episode they want. Yeah. Yeah, right there. Because that was huge, right? Because yeah. they were all like, "Let Cosmo help Rebecca." Right. Let Cosmo help. Let Rebecca work in his store, please. Let Cosmo help Rebecca. Yeah. Well, we tried our best. We we tried our best, you know. But then she escaped, you know. Right. Back in the bushes, she goes. Yeah. But I was in the bushes myself. I'm right. sure you. Were, yeah, you, me too. You were, you know, in a few bushes yourself, right? Yeah. So, and she's also 24. Like I just got started at 24. Right. Yeah. You know, so hopefully, uh, but I heard she's been out there for a long time already. So yeah. she's like 16. So hopefully she's at her tail end. But yeah, it went crazy. It yeah. went crazy. And then he saw my twin brother that I have a twin brother that works in the store with me. And he was fascinated by the twins. It is he fascinating. Goes, he goes, you guys are twins. And one is a girl. One is a boy. What? So anyway, he asked me and Joe to be on his podcast. Right. So they're like, Cosmo's the new Rebecca. Fuck Rebecca. She don't want to get sober. We yeah, want this. We we want the solution. Cosmo's bringing the solution, and she's thriving. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, you know. So anyway, it's like kind of instant fame. Right. Yeah. For instant sure. fame. And I went to Vegas, and I'm getting all these opportunities. I'm like, this magazine, this magazine, that magazine, this magazine. You know, all these interviews. I really feel like Cosmo Kardashian. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Yeah, it's just overnight, you know, and um, I'm just so grateful. I'm just so grateful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then um, uh, one question. I have some questions from fans for you. Okay. You want some? Give it to me, okay. Daddy. Yeah, I posted on my, on my Facebook that we're having you on here, so I got some questions. Okay. So these are fan questions, and one person asked, uh, "Which part, which past fashion trend do you love and feel should make a comeback?" 
Um, I really love all of them. I love all the trends. You know, I love like from 60s, like the Jackie O. I love all that. Um, and then also the Goldie Horn and all that sexy mini skirts and go go boots and right. love. Also love seventies like bell bottoms, glam rock, you know, Gucci. I love turbans, you know, eighties Madonna. Okay. Right. John Paul Gaultier, plaid, punk rock, you know, the the things that kids think is new right now. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's like it was. Yeah, it, we've done it, right? Yeah. So, but only now we're doing it with a little twist and a little t- turn. You You're know? right. So, um, I literally love all of it. Maybe '90s was a little weird, like with the plaid shirts, and it wasn't too fashionable, you right? Know? But, um, but I hung in there. But um, you had the bowling oh, no. shorts. The bowling shirts. Oh, the barrel to bowling. <laughs> the, I mean, but those Jinko jeans are coming back. So big. So big. You're right. That's so crazy. big. Like those wide leg pants. Even when I see people buy them, I'm like, no, they're not going to. Yep, they do. They're sick. Yeah. Like the wider the pant, it's right. crazy. Yeah, with the pockets, the yep. cargo pockets, yeah. and the platform shoes. Right. <clears throat> so I really am in love with all of it. You know, and then they also try to go futuristic, you know, it's always like, you know, let's go silver, let's go space age, you know, when they can't, when you finish with the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, 2000s, then they try to go futuristic, you know what I mean? And then it goes back to like the 70s, 60s and like history every 20 years, you know, changes. But you're right, right now the girls, like it was last year was all high waisted. Now it's really like low. Do you remember the Frankie B's with the, yeah. the zipper was this big? Yeah. And you saw it. With right the, above. It was, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I just love all of it. Right. I really just love all of it, you know. And then uh, another one we have too is with such a demanding career, how do you manage work life balance? I'm really learning right now, right. you know, and I'm kind of like lazy and I like to get up late and I like to play with my dogs and have like a lot of cigarettes and coffee, talk on the phone to my family in New York. But now with this extra layer that I'm very grateful for, right. but I'm filming, you know, and I'm yeah. on TikTok live and then I'm also I have a tight schedule because all these interviews. So now I have this new, um, this new layer, you right. know. So it means like a new schedule. Yeah. You know, so I'm really like, it's really hard for me to get up early, like, you know, and then like I have to like start eventually because you got to be strong because, you know, when you're on the camera all the time, you get exhausted. Yeah. It's exhausting. You know, and I'm not, yeah. I'm not in the greatest shape anymore. Right. Like when you met me, I was dancing, right. and I was going to the gym, and I was on Herbal Life. You know, yeah. And then COVID came, and I found Stater Brothers fried chicken. Yeah, I did, I mean, and it was over, right? Done between my mother's meatballs and Stater Brothers fried chicken, and then I just became, I, I developed like this food addiction because I just love food, right? You know, and in my family, it was like love through food, right? You know, if not, we were killing each other. So anyway. I'm working on that, and also I got a patch to stop smoking cigarettes the other day. You gotta stop. Yeah, because my doctor's like, you know, I let you slide, Cosmo. He goes, right. well, you're 60 years old. He goes, you have to stop now. Right. So I'm giving you these patches, yeah. you know? And um, I tried yesterday, I put a patch on, and then you know, for a few hours I didn't smoke. Right. And then I got a few feelings, and I, was, I started lighting up, you know? And they're like, you can't do the patch on a cigarette because you'll fucking explode. Right. You know what I mean? So I'm working on those things, you right. know, as you know, like the addiction, you know. Yeah, the food thing, even with me, dude, it's like, well, I've never had money. But you love food. I love and food. You gave me a few recipes. <laughs> right. You gave me your kale recipe, which is really delicious. See, but back, see, back then. With the lemon and the right. garlic and the oil. Yeah. That's fucking phenomenal. Right. But you can't live on kale alone. No. You know what I mean? Like, we like food. Right. You know? We'll see, that was the thing, too, though, is back, back in those days, especially to like all, like, I never had enough money to just go fill a shopping cart. I've never in my life had enough money to be spending like I do now on Postmates. I never in my life had enough money to like go to a seven hundred dollar, mm-hmm. like you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. I've taken pla- Chelsea mm-hmm. places. She's taken me places, mm-hmm. and that brings a whole new. If you can just get whatever you want, yeah, whenever 
it's, it's, a, just, it's a whole no, new hobby and yeah, whole the new, whole, exactly. all these new foods out. Right. And like, and we starved ourselves for years. Like right. I was this big. Oh yeah. Honestly. For sure. And I still thought I was fat and I was cracked out and you saw my bones and I'm like, but I'm still fat. So I know I have body dysmorphia. Right. And I honestly think I'm happier, fatter, you know? Yeah. And, you know, and I even get more dick fatter, you know, because wow. I'm happier. You know what I mean? Yeah. I know when I was skinny, um, basically, like, on a diet, I was always, like, angry. I was right. always hangry. So, um, but now it's like, you know, it's one thing at a time, you yeah. know? It's yeah. like, you know, it's, it's progress. It's not perfection. Right. You know, I know I got in shape before. I'm going to get in shape again, you know. But it's just, it's going to be in God's time. It's going to be yeah. in my time. I've been approaching it. I've been approaching it very similar. So now I've been having people call me, keep me accountable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I've been checking in with certain people. They're checking in with me. Hey, are you going to the gym today? What'd you eat today? Mm -hmm. And it just really helped. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just... And the the crazy thing and shout well, out. there there is a whole like food program. Oh that yeah, we yeah. Can, you got to really, but you got to really make a decision, right? Because you, know? you can't just be like, oh, I slipped and had a hamburger, right? No, they're not having it. Right. They're like, this is what you're gonna do. No flour starting today. Right. No sugar. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you can't like relapse. Like you, you have to start today. You got to be serious. You yeah. know. So my food sponsor, like truly, they fired me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was fired. You know. Yeah. So I'm just not ready. It's just like you know, I got to be willing. You know, yeah. to do that. Just like the drugs. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, and I just I really love food. But the good thing about you, I see you work out. Yeah. So, like, as much weight as you gain, like, you always look good because your shoulders are good and your arms, you know? Right. You know, and all the girls still love you, okay? <laughs> so, and trannies and other, you know? But, uh, you know, so you, you look great. See, I don't right. go to the gym. I never went to the gym. I don't like working out. I don't even like muscles. Right. You know what I mean? So, basically, I probably got to go, like, back to dance class. I love dancing. Yeah, you something know? you like doing all the time. Yeah. And, um... What's something people might be surprised to learn about the world of celebrity fashion styling? Well, uh, number one, they want everything for free. Right. <laughs> Basically, you know, so what I get a lot with the celebrities I dress is like, okay, I'll give you a shout out and I'll, I'll say this is your outfit, but you got to give me the outfit for free. Right. You know, and if I got to pay for it, I'm not going to shout you out. So, which I think sucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, um, but that's. I know back in the day you were not fucking going for that. No. Never. I, <laughs> even now. Right, yeah. Even now, like, there's a few people that came to the store recently. Right. You know, there's a few people wearing my clothes on tour. So I'm like, let's make a deal. How about you do a rental and you shout my name out? You know, so right. basically you're paying half the price, a third of the price, and you're going to shout me out. How about that? Right. Otherwise, you're not going to wear my outfit. How yeah. about that? You know? So basically, good thing I have a rapport with these people. Yeah. And they fucking love me. Because yeah. I'll fucking, like, I'll, you know, it's like. But um, usually, that's usually the case. I mean, that's, that's see, and this is something that I learned from you very early on, too. And that's why I always, I remember working at the store. And some people at the store were trying to try to side hustle out of the store. You know what I mean? And every time I saw the kids that work for you, one, you fired them because they're fucking hustling out of your store. Mm. But two, they end up fucking cheaping them themselves. Mm, right. So the best thing what, that I always realize is when I make something and put it in the store, I'm like, it's in Cosmo's store. Mm -hmm. You have to pay for it. Right. It's right. not mine. Right. I designed it for the store. Right. So like people, especially to like new stylists, it's like, dude, it's a very hard industry to get into. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you're going to be doing a lot of work for free. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So if you're getting into this to like, you know what I mean? You were a really good mentor because I saw you never back down on the prices. It didn't matter who it was. They're fucking paying well, for the I shit. Well, I paid my dues. Right. Like exactly. in those days, I would give like maybe Nicki Minaj something to wear. Right. You know what I mean? I pay my dues, you know? Yeah. I, I did that thing for Beyonce. You know what I mean? The cover of Ebony Magazine. Yeah, I remember. Like I wanted to build my name. Yeah. But then once I build my name, now the freebie's over. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Like, like Erica Badu. Yeah. She comes in my store. 
and she gives back to the community and she knows we're all artists like her. Right. And she knows how hard it is, you know, to make a living these days on Melrose. And I've been there and she respects every minute of it. Yeah. And she'll come in and she'll literally like start dancing in my dressing room. Right. You know, you've seen the videos. Yep. And, yeah. But she's so sweet and she'll give you a shout out and she'll she'll drop like she'll just keep on shopping like even her assistant's like we got to go erica she goes no i'm with cosmo i want to stay you right. know what i mean we're having the time of our lives yeah and she just buys everything yeah fashion she's so icon, supportive too. she's so and then she calls me you know right. and she's like i want to do a clothing line with you that we're, we don't know we're going to get into nice you know call cosmo and erica you know and there's people like that that give back because yeah. they know how hard we worked. Right. Because she worked hard to get where she is. Yeah. And she hasn't forgot it. So she really supportive on all the artists, you know? Yeah. So there's, a, you know, there's, there's celebrities like that, which I'm yeah. like, oh my God, thank God they keep the doors open. You Definitely. know what I mean? But other than that, you know, people want, a lot of people want things for free. Or you get these Instagram models, you yeah, know? Yeah. And like they did one thing or one commercial and they're like, oh, you owe me, like, you know, you're lucky I'm wearing your brown, your yeah. brand, you know? And I'm like, girl, uh, Ross is around the corner, girl. Yeah. Okay, and Kmart's right there, girl, okay. <laughs> yeah, they get, like, one video with a million views, and then all of a sudden they're... They're a star, yeah, yeah. and they don't want to pay for stuff, you know? But I'm I mean, very, you I, did that one, you just recently, too, I mean, and talk about staying, like, completely, like, uh, like, you. I saw the, the Meg the Stallion, and that was just, like... The most iconic look. Was that a music video she did? Yeah. She did a music video. She's wearing all gold. Yeah. I forgot what song it was. What is it like that? But that blew my mind too. Because that was like, that just happened, boom, overnight, you know? Right. Um, her stylist came in, and she's one of the biggest stylists in, in the business. Right. So, and she was so cool. Like, when they're cool, right. and they're down to earth... You know, and they don't hound you about a price or anything like that. That means like, the, you know, the, like they made it. Yeah, they made it. So anyway, um, she's like, I need this. I need this cowboy hat. I need this little outfit. I need it in gold. Da 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 da. So I didn't know who she was. I really don't know because these people don't dress up. They're very casual, and they don't look like they have money at all. They're just hardworking like you and me. Right. Yeah. And those are the ones that don't give you a headache honestly and then the next week i see megan the stallion it was from megan the stallion oh so you never knew i didn't like... i didn't know oh didn't really know. but i think she told donato uh yeah. basically because i wasn't there when she picked it up and uh i think she gave us a shout out yeah 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 so uh yeah did you yeah that outfit it was sick huh? yeah yeah i i immediately knew it was yours the hat yeah so i was like right when i saw it i'm like oh cosmo did this i didn't even know yeah until you guys posted it later. Yeah. But I saw it and then yeah. I'm like, oh, no, Cosmo Donato sure. popped those out. Yeah, Donato. Well, me and Donato, like, yeah. we designed everything together. Right. But, um, he came in with these hats one day and I was like, oh my God. But now those hats, uh, you know, with Beyonce, it right. was crazy. She told everybody to wear silver. So we made all those hats silver, you know? Yeah. And thank God for our concert. Uh, you know, we killed it. You know, like her fans really came in. So they here's the deal. They didn't spend like a thousand dollars, right? And they didn't spend eight hundred dollars, but they all spend like from one hundred and fifty to three hundred fifty dollars, and right. they all bought something, nice. you know. So that was like amazing, right? Yeah. And now she's doing the country album, right? You guys are gonna go. So it's cowboy again, and I love Coachella, and I love cowboy, yeah. and I love fringe, and I love all that stuff. So bring back the jackets with the. With the fringe, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Those are sick. White, some white cream colors with the brown cowhide. I think we should collab. On, you want to collab? On yeah, some I want to do something. Let's do something insane, yeah, right? Yeah, let's it's do it. It's time. It's time. We haven't worked together collab. like that, right? Let's do something sickening, right? So Cosmo and Brandon coming. Well, coming Cosmo soon. Donato and Brandon. Yeah, yeah. Wait till you see this out. See, that's another thing though too. When you when you when you started out saying like. I don't know, because you're like, I don't, you didn't think of how impactful you were on my sobriety, you know what I mean? And and how important you are. But when I really think about it too, even looking back, is one you put it, it's like you gave me the chance to be in the setting, you know what I mean? 
you had the year sober and you kind of even were like, Donato steers the boat. Like we're new, Donato's steering the boat. Yeah. You know what I mean? And there was times when me and Donato nope. yeah. would, would butt heads. Yeah. But after all of it, I'm like, this guy had the best interest looking out for me since day one. Donato. Well, you know why? And he, Okay, so, yeah. yeah. And you know, it's like Donato's sober at the end of the day. Right. Like he goes to his meeting in his yard. Yeah. You know, I see he works his program. Right. So it's, it's, he will never fuck you over. Right. You know what I mean? Because at yeah. the end of the day, he's got to do a 10-step. Right. You know what I mean? And yeah. then when you're wrong. So basically, and I couldn't do it by myself. You right. Know, I had to ask for help. I couldn't yeah. do it. Like the stores became monsters. Right. Thank God. So busy. But I had to call Donato in. Yeah. Because he was my sponsor and I trusted him. And I know that he's sober now for 25 years. Yeah. And I just rather, there was a lot of people I could have pulled in to help me. Yeah. But I got robbed so much in the fucking past, you right. know, like with even family members. Right. You know that. But you know when you're like in AA, you know, I have to say AA, whatever, you could bleep it out or whatever. Yeah, I know. You, you know, I'm, I'm proud of it. Um, we have a lot of sober followers I'm, on this I'm podcast. I'm just proud yeah. of it, you know. I'll shout it from the rooftops. Um, me too, I do. Yeah, at the end of the day, he's got a program. Yeah. So I know, you know, he's got an answer to, and like I trust him with everything. Yeah. Well, I think there was a lot of things that were harder for me and you in the beginning because we were used to running the place a certain way. We grab things, we throw them out. You go downtown, you don't check it in. You write down that I sold this, that you owe me this. Remember back in the day, I would just, I mean, all of us would do it. I took a hundred bucks, put it in the thing, yeah. grab the money out. Two was like, all right. I'm taking off your paycheck. <laughs> hey, can you sell these shirts for me? Put them in. Yeah. She's like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. we just did whatever the fuck we right. wanted. It was so unmanageable. Right. And it, it was the best times of our lives. That's when we learned. Yeah. You know, but actually there was no, man yeah, it was no, um, there was no manageability. Right. And